So today's topic is stop working for biscuits. And what I mean by that is don't work for the purposes of money and clout. Like, don't make that your sole motivation. Yeah, money is a good thing. Clout, I guess, you know, popularity is kind of, those are good things. But if you let that be your sole driving force, and believe me, it's, it's very, it, very attractive. I, at least for me, I find I find those things incredibly attractive. Um, you can get sucked into it, and it can take you off of. It'll take you off of the path, and the path is actually your path. That means whatever it is that you've set out to do, um, whatever you have set out, whatever it was that got you off your ass and made you want to learn how to draw in the first place. Maybe it was because you thought that. You know, you wanted to draw your own cool, awesome comic book characters. Maybe it was because you wanted to draw sexy characters. Maybe it was because, you know, you needed to draw original the character. Do not steal. And that is maybe the, the, the most purest. That was like your most purest wish, your most purest motivation to get into art. And that was, that was the thing that set you off. That was your your destination like that was the thing that that you wanted to head towards and and then you know along comes these these social media systems and whatnot which put us into contact with lots and lots of people and it is a these systems are a tremendous torrential river they have a flow it is not easy to it's a very turbulent flow there's all sorts of eddies and whirlpools and it's very hard to just walk across from one side of the river to the other side of the river because you're going to walk across the river, you're going to get caught in the flow, and it's going to go, and you just get swept sideways. You get swept in the direction uh, that you didn't want to go, or you didn't even know. You don't even know you're caught in the current because that current is just moving so fast. And before you know it, you're drawing Bowsette, and you're drawing Samsung Girl, and you're drawing whatever hot, thing of the meme, meme of the moment there might be and and rather than drawing whatever it was that that really turned you on to drawing and so it can lead you into something i call a cane's sacrifice and a cane's sacrifice is like you you put in a lot of a lot of effort and time and and whatnot and you are expecting to be rewarded for it you you start working for biscuits you do the thing so that you can increase those viewer counts you do the thing so that it gets a lot, a lot of shares. And you know what? You can't really... It's, people are very capricious. I like that phrase. Uh, capricious. And you can't really predict it. And so whenever... you know, it, it just means that you'll be doing it for all the wrong reasons. You might not get what you're looking for. And then you'll be jaded. You'll get jaded because you bust your fucking ass on it. And you know, you'll be doing... You'll be doing things that you that objectively could be seen as very good, but maybe it was the wrong kind of sacrifice, and the gods of of social media decided not to promote your post. And even if you did, even if you you let's, let's say your post actually worked out, and 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 you know people liked it and they shared it around a lot. Well, did they like it for the same reasons you liked it? Did did it do really well because maybe it hit a, the right influencers and 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 it took off? Did did it do really well because you posted it at the right time of day? Did it do really well because it's like a fucking slot machine, right? A slot machine, it's, it's just you put a coin in the machine, you pull the lever, and you're like, oh, oh, is it going to come up? Am I going to win? Am I going to win? And when you win, it's like, did you win because you were rubbing your hands together? Did you win because, you know, you, the coin that you put in was hot from your body heat? You know, like, what ritual must you pull off to gain the success from the fucking slot machine that is, that is the social media system? And, and the thing is that... It's it it is the social media systems are are like like gambling. It's like a gambling addiction. I say this as somebody who gets sucked into it. Okay, I find these things like slot machines. You know, you sit there, you you're scrolling, and then you're waiting. There's not enough. You want more input and feedback, and the little circle's spinning, and you're pulling on the thing, and the circle's fucking spinning. You know, and you're you're. I just feel like I haven't been on social media for a for a, you know, quite a while, and. And I know that anytime somebody shows me a social media post, I can only stay on there for so long before I start to feel like my brain is getting sucked into it. 
and and before I want to join the comment, you know, the, the comment fire pit, the um the trash fire that is the comment section. And like I say, it, it means that all of your interactions are now being guided by other people. And and not by I, I just feel like it's impossible to maintain your artistic purity. You you wind up diluting yourself in, in the whims of other people on you know, on, on these systems, because what these systems do is they reward, they reward interaction with the crowd. They reward um, the dissolution of your individuality. And and so I'm look. I know that every every artist that wants to make that wants to get make it big and they want the money and the clout, you know, or maybe they want to run a business. Maybe it is absolutely necessary that you use these social media systems. Maybe it is. You know, it's like they've they've got their monopoly, and it's impossible to, to find a nook of the woods where you can actually do business anymore. So, if you must use these systems, use them with great caution and use them with great leeriness. You should be you should be very weary of them. You should be very sorry, leery of them. You should hold them at arm's length. With and and you know, perf, you know, if you must touch them, touch them with a ten foot with a ten foot pole. Try not to smell. Try not to stay on them too long, because they reward they reward people sitting on their on their fucking toilets and while they post a mean tweet while they while they take a shit. Okay, it's like these these places will destroy. You get a bunch of you get a bunch of cancelers to get onto your case, right? Because you, they they didn't like a thing that you were drawing. You didn't you know accede to their demands, and they will cancel you out of existence, and then that they're going to end your whole career. So I say, be real fucking careful with these things. They they want your social information and whatnot. They want all your personal information. They aren't to be trusted, and uh, and there's always these algorithms that that are capricious. They're inscrutable. They are hard to understand. Um, and those or those things, the purpose of these. There's one thing that is clear about these algorithms: that the purpose of these algorithms is to maintain as many viewers or as many participants on these systems as possible. And it's to make sure that you can't just get up there, get your post on there, get your, you know, get your biscuit, feel satisfied, and then move on. Because what'll happen is, is that you know, sometimes they may have to, you know, even though you make your post, they may might have to fucking take you down a few pegs so that you know you'll work a little harder, right? It's like it's like Overwatch, right? You know, sometimes when when Blizzard and Overwatch they have a, a matchmaking system that kind of if you're playing, they'll, they'll kind of make sure that they match make you with a bunch of other people, and they'll they'll rig the game to make sure that you absolutely lose, so you can't go up a tier. You know, so, so they try to drag you along. It, it's like if they're willing to do that for something like a matchmaking for a video game matchmaking system, I, I guarantee you. You know, it's like Jack Dorsey's has probably got that shit set up. He's got that shit on lockdown. So yeah, you got to watch out. You got to watch out for these things. Don't stop working for biscuits. Um, you know, you you got to you got to work for you got to find yourself again. You got to find your individuality, which means to find out what do you really like, what do you dislike. Um, I I say to people that they should become their own Gordon Ramsay, right? You know how how Gordon Ramsay is. he's always like it's fucking raw because he's really picky about the you know he's very very discerning. He's a very discerning, very you know distinguishing indiv indiv individual. Very passionate about what's what's right and what's wrong, and you've got to be your own Gordon Ramsay, meaning that when it comes to looking at what seeing what's good and bad is not what everybody goes for. It's it's that you look at a thing, you want things done a certain way. You, you as an artist, the best thing you can do as an artist is to take your ideas and to present them in the way that you you think they should be presented, and. There's times when, like, you look at um, a particular subject matter that is portrayed, and maybe it might be a subject matter that you are somewhat interested in. But you know, it's like whenever I see that subject matter, I'm like, no, I'd make this part a little bit larger. I'd make that part a little bit smaller. Make that longer. Make that narrower. Whatever. I'd make you know. There's a lot of things that I would do differently. You know, I don't like that expression. It's like that. That that thing doesn't speak to me the way I want. That's that's the personal. That's the personal Gordon Ramsay that comes along. And and you and and maybe 
it's something that you had to develop because I know that when I first started out with drawing, it's like anybody who could draw reasonably well and had the basics down, I was like, oh, they're all good. And then as you get better and better, you you start to become more discerning. Now you don't just grade people by how good they are, but rather you say, I like that artist because I like the use of like Nurjan Bekleyev. I like him because I like his use of ambient occlusion. Or I might like Claire Wendling because I like her sense of design. I like her her, her line work and, and you know I like her 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 ability to control form and the way she draws animals. I like this other animal this other um, artist because like Krenz, you know, because the guy has freaking amazing sense of lighting and color and, and and I'm like this like you you have these different artists that you'll like for different reasons and so it means that it's no longer about a singular monolithic reason of why you might like something it's not simple uh, a simple monolithic level of goodness but rather it begins to fracture into something kind of like the olympics you've got somebody who's really good at throwing discus you've got another athlete who's really good at throwing the javelin you got another guy who's good at maybe two of those things but sucks at running and so just because they're they're not good at everything, but they're good at they have their specialties, then it means that those those people are still good athletes because they've got something they're good at, and so becoming the in, like 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 from from a from a technical standpoint, okay, just from the technical standpoint of an artist, there's going to be some things that are are going to be really important to you. There's going to be certain technical aspects that are particularly important to you. Particular sports in the Olympics, categories within the, within the Olympics that 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 you are interested in. And so you can receive, you can achieve personal technical excellence by getting good in those areas of 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 skill. And and when you've achieved that level, and and you've achieved with Cry Engine Three, when you've achieved that level, and you're very satisfied, you know, like like that, you've you've got technical satisfaction. And then from there when you have reached the level of te technical satisfaction that, that, that you require, you, you don't have to be constantly, you know, searching, unless you like it, all right? If you ever see another form of technical satisfaction that you want to achieve, absolutely keep working for it, right? Those are the objective, those are the easy objective goals you can work towards. Those are the, the I call them woodcutting goals. Woodcutting goals is because you can make steady, steady incremental improvement towards those things, and it's very, very satisfying. You're just chopping wood, man. Just chopping wood, chopping wood. Doesn't take a whole lot of like. It takes mental thinkerage to be able to figure out how to how to improve your 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 skills in those those aspects. But you can really, without a shadow of of a doubt, you know, say I'm good at this thing and not so good at that thing. Get those things on speed dial. All right, get them on lockdown because the, as soon as you you achieve, as sooner you achieve um, technical satisfaction, then the sooner you can actually begin to start thinking about, well, what are you really interested in and what got you drawing in the first place? And, and then you can start getting into the aesthetic satisfaction and trying to find aesthetic satisfaction from your artwork. And so the, there are, I have reached a level of technical satisfaction and there are things that I am now like into, like when I talk about like aesthetic satisfaction, it means that I can look at work that I did a while ago and still like it. Like, uh, Like I made, you know, these drawings years ago. So I, I, I achieved, <laughs> I achieved my 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 technical satisfaction a while ago. Now I pursue aesthetic satisfaction, right? I think this is like one of my still one of my favorite drawings. It's like 2019. And I still like it. Right? I really like these. I think these are still really really cool. Right now they don't have the most tight super super they're not the most super tight they're they're very loose drawings but that doesn't matter to me it's kind of gritty it's it, it kind of gives it some life that that's what i like all right you might like something different um oh yeah i like this one as well i mean i've started liking drawing things that have uh oh god what's that 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 term Japanese term. Waga something. Ah, oh, God. It's it's basically the it's liking something for its imperfection, right? You know, even though it has imperfections, it's still it's it's what makes it enjoyable. Um, and it's not about making things that are super pristine and and whatnot. Like I I still like this. I, I really like these these drawings. They're very very carefree. They got the proportions I like. 
they're totally unrealistic proportions, but you know, fuck it, man. It's like, I'm like, to me, it's artistic perfection, right? It's like, I'm aesthetically satisfied with it. Um, that's what you got to do is you're, you've got to find how you can be, um, aesthetically satisfied. Oh yeah. <laughs> right. You got to find a way to draw in such a way that when you see it again, you like it. You, you, you know, it's, it's still very, you can't even lift that sword. <laughs> right so drawings that you made a long time ago if they were you know if they're they're aesthetically satisfying you can look at them again and, and they'll bring you joy right it's learning to draw in such a way that it brings you joy and i think this is the problem with with twitter is that twitter doesn't it doesn't get you to draw um it doesn't encourage you to draw in a way that that you find is aesthetically satisfying it doesn't get you to draw in a way that that pleases you <laughs> right so i mean it's not going to help you become the artist that you were meant to be and only you can decide decide that if you leave it to the crowd you'll never become you'll never gain satisfaction instead you'll be caught in a machine whose purpose is to fucking it the, the machine will offer you the satisfaction of crowd acceptance it will offer you giant numbers you'll get counters which show the number of viewer impressions that you've that you've attained but i mean the number of viewer impressions you get the, the viewer impression counts are not the number of people you made they're not Your viewer impression count is not a count of the number of people you left an impression on. You leave an impression on somebody, it means that after they, they walked away from your art, the art, the art followed them. The art stuck in their minds and it reminded them of a thing. And it changed something about the way they behaved or changed something about the way they thought. Or at least when they, you know, at, at times it will come up and it will, it'll make them think. And I mean, that's, that's what it means to leave an impression on somebody. And, you know, trying to get that mass acceptance, it's just... Not the way to, like, social media is just, it's not going to turn you into that kind of person. I think only after you've, you've taken that lonely journey and found yourself can you really return to, to Twitter and then, and then maybe you've got something to show. And, and maybe only after you have your own reassurance in yourself as an artist. Um, are you really ready for Twitter? Because I think a lot of people want so badly to get a pat on the back and they're not, they're not secure in their own worth as an artist. And so they look to the crowd to tell them how much they're worth. And, and all I can say is like, it will, it will, it will dissolve your, your individuality because even if you can completely, you know, satisfy that crowd, the things that you make which satisfy the crowd won't be done to your specification. They won't be done. I mean, it's it's like you've you've betrayed and you've cheated upon your own your own aesthetic, your own sense of aesthetics. I, I say it, it's like it's like cheating on your girlfriend. Right, it's like if your own sense of aesthetics is like is is your girlfriend, your your own ideal waifu, perhaps they want to draw your ideal waifu. It's like that's that's your sense of aesthetics, and if you start drawing other people's waifus, I mean, oh yeah, that's that's like that that fucking meme with the 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 girl with the blue shirt and the girl with the red shirt, right? It's like.
Look at this fucking thing, right? Okay. So in this case, right, th th this is this is like you know your aesthetics. Uh, whatever. <laughs> your aesthetics. <laughs> and then and then this is like okay there and that's you all right so so don't okay don't don't cheat on your aesthetics all right that's all i got to say